The real original Model T's were about twice as long as they were wide. I'm three feet wide, so that would mean six feet long. But I am trying to keep this thing minimal. So right now it's at five feet uh, long between the axles. So I'm gonna climb up and see how it feels. Get some measurements. All this stuff is just sitting here, so this is kind of great. I think we'll be good if I can keep the steering linkage as far front as is possible. I may even make it come out of the, uh, of the front instead of backwards. I think this will be work for two adults. Two little adults side by side with their knees folded. So the dashboard will have to end right here so the knees can come up. The steering wheel will be about right here. I measured uh, a couple of days ago, I measured a standard size six year old. She needs about 30 inches from her back to the pedals. So it might be a little short. I mean, it might be too big for her. I might have to put duplicate pedals or put movable pedals. Uh, movable pedals would be a whole lot simpler than a movable seat. So I'll go ahead and uh, weld the frame out, finish the frame out, and we'll go from there and then do the steer. Frame and the steer. Once I decided how long to make the cart, dropping in these two pieces of square stock was pretty simple. The front cross member was already mitered and the back is just a butt joint. This is kind of a high stress joint so I'm going to put a plate under the bottom, make sure that it doesn't collapse bouncing down the road. The front's going to be probably okay. I don't like these square tubes I put to hold up the bumper think they look wrong I'm gonna replace them with round even though it makes the joint a little more complicated I got some bumpers for the mini T cart front and back cut this truck leaf spring the other day. I know it was way too long. I just kind of guessed and tuck, cut a chunk out of the middle and tack welded it and then I got busy. I put it outside and the next time I went to go check on it, it had popped all by itself. So I guess this stuff is uh, super tempered so I'll have to um, anneal it a little bit. It won't be high tech. I'll just heat it up with the torch till it turns red and when it cools off it won't be as hard as it is now. That's for sure. Okay, I'm messing around with the bumper and the bumper support. I got the round pipe stuck inside the square pipe and I welded way too much. Now I'm realizing that one, the bumper sits too low. If I'm gonna weld it to here, it's gonna look funny. I need to get it up higher, which is a problem because I already got the pipes welded in a hole. And two, the little scrolls at the end, which I thought would look kind of cool, they're just uh, the scale, they're too big. So I'm gonna cut those off um, 
I'm gonna cut the bumper where it is now and weld it together. I'll have to heat it, heat it up and, and soften it up a little bit. And I'm gonna have to cut these pipes at maybe a 45 and raise them and then and then uh, cut opposite 45 and level them back out again. Would have been a lot easier on the bench, but they're in the car now, so that's what we'll work on. Okay, so I offset my pipe to get it up about five inches. And I cut the um, bumper again to make it smaller. And I cut the big circles off the end. And I held it up here until everything looked good. It's kind of hard to tell, actually. And I got it marked with chalk. So I'm going to cut, cut these two pipes and get this thing up here and probably put the level on it. I'm going to have to bend. These are just tacked. I'm going to have to bend these around, get it as straight as I can before I weld it. And that's it. It's not coming off anymore. One of the properties of high carbon steel is that you can change its temper. You can temper it. You can heat it up and quench it and make it harder. Like this spring is super hard. Or you can make it softer by heating it up and letting it cool slow. Um, it's a science all to itself. And this is not very scientific. I'm just trying to... Uh, <clears throat> remove some of this super hard temper enough so that my weld will hold you know otherwise it's brittle and it's going to pop so i'm heating it up getting a nice red color and i'm just letting it sit and it is definitely removing some of the temper i just um it's not the knife making guys wouldn't be very happy with me right now this is a tricky thing to measure but i think i have the bumper sitting where i want it to go it looks good it's being held up from falling by these half inch square bars that are clamped and from flipping over frontwards. I got this one by two going down to the ground so I can. So the bumper on the back was much easier than the bumper on the front. For one thing, I had the learning curve down and I kind of knew what to do with the leaf spring and that went quicker. And then this is the only support I needed. So I had to play around a couple of times to get the angle right. So I ruined a few pieces of square stock. But I got the angle right, and I welded it here. And because it's leaning in, that angle wasn't quite right. But I just put a straight edge top and bottom and marked it. And, and now it's good to go. I need to clean the surface and rig up something to hold it still. And now I'm going to tack it on there. So I got it hanging kind of upside down to catch some wells that I couldn't get from the top. I got this weld and this weld and this weld and this weld which I couldn't get very well from the top and plus the bottom of this um, I put a little plate I put a little plate on the end of this box because it was open and it better ties it to this cross beam and also to this one and I welded this because it had never been welded before the same into top I welded where this one tied into this one because it had never been welded and then I put a plate on top that's probably a pretty good stress joint right there and did the same up there and where this brace came into the back at an angle it kind of stuck past so I trimmed it off and plated it and welded it and I think everything's welded now I'm gonna put it back right side up put a coat of paint on the top surfaces because tomorrow I'm gonna bring it home and do some carpentry start making the seat and stuff like that before I get too far along with the controls Okay, big day, big day. Rolling chassis is complete. It is time to bring it home and start fabricating some body parts so I will know where to attach the controls. Um, so far, so good. It's taking a little longer than I had guessed, but time is really irrelevant on a project like this. And I ended up the bumpers by putting a small pipe on each end. Kind of makes it a little less likely to uh, give a shin injury and there's a place to stick flags.